the Caliphatus, and today we're talking about electrodipoles and ECG. First off, I'd like to talk about what an electrodipole actually is. Now, as you can see in my diagram, an electrodipole is simply a moment between two charges and a distance between them. So you can see on the equation, uh, P is equal to Q times D. So that basically means that P is actually a vector. Now, this is very key in understanding the dipole effect on the ECG, because this means the dipole has a magnitude as well as direction, which is key when we explain it later on. Now, an electrodipole moment is, of course, a measure of polarity. Now, during this presentation, I'll be talking about two types of polarity, depolarization, where negative charges flow to positive charges, and repolarization, which is the other way around, where positive charges flow to negative charges. And you may ask, how is this useful in ECG? Well, of course, the properties of electrodipoles can be utilized in ECG very easily to analyze the kinetic cycle. Now, before we talk about the kinetic cycle, let's just quickly make a few notes on the ECG and the leads or weather effects. So to start out, we have two leads placed either side of the sternum, just below the fourth intercostal space. Now, when I say intercostal space, that means the space in between your ribs, if you feel them. Now, uh, one lead is placed in the fifth intercostal space, in line with the middle of the collarbone. Another lead is placed in the fifth intercostal space, underneath the middle of the shoulder. Now, we have two leads, two leads left. So, one lead is placed in between the lead, which is in the middle of the collarbone, and the lead that's on the right of the sternum. And the final lead is placed in between the lead, which is in the middle of the shoulder, and the lead, which is in the line of the middle of the collarbone. And of course, there are other leads which are placed on the hands and legs. Now, um, these are to um, counteract noise from around the body. Now, all these leads um, you see here in the diagram um, look at the heart from different angles, and of course, um, come up with different vectors when they measure the depolarization rate. All these are combined together to produce the ECG that we normally see. Now, here's the simple diagram of the cardiac cycle. Um, it starts with the early diastole phase. Uh, this is when the heart is relaxed, the ventricles expand and they begin to fill, but not very quickly. And next we have the isothalamic, the, the atrial systole, sorry, which is when the atria contracts and the blood is pumped into the ventricle and it's completely full. After this we have the isovolumic ventricular contraction, which is where the ventricle muscles start to contract, but very slowly so the ventricle um, actual volume isn't changed at all. After this we have ventricular ejection, where the ventricle completely contracts and the blood is pumped around the body. After this, we have finished off with the isovolumic ventricular relaxation, which is where the ventricles relax and the volume is unchanged. But at this point as well, the atria begins to relax and they begin to fill up again to start off with the early diastole phase. Now here you can see in my diagram, I've actually been able to um, copy a, a simple ECG uh, pattern with the P, Q, R, S and T waves, and actually annotate where the cardiac cycle actually fits in with these waves. So of course you can see the atrial systole there, which is where the atria actually contracts and depolarizes, and you can see the increase that this causes, and it's called the P wave. Now after this you have the QRS wave, which is where the ventricle depolarizes, and you can see the big increase that causes, and you can see it when it's completely repolarized on the S and T phase. Now at the T wave, it's actually when the ventricle um, repolarizes, and that reduces down to the isoelectric lamp. And you may ask, of course, if the ventricle uh, depolarizes, why doesn't the atrial? And well, of course it does, but of course you cannot see it because um, the amplitude of the ventricle is much more compared to the amplitude of the atrial. And also you can see that there are times where the amplitude of the, of the heart actually goes below the isoelectric line. This is caused by something called hyperpolarization, where the body actually overcompensates for an increase in, um, increase in potential. So how are you for electric dipoles and ECG? Well, without them, it would be almost impossible to analyze the cardiac cycle of a patient without through a non-invasive technique. To help show intervagalities in a, in a patient's problems and problems in them quickly and easily. Thank you very much for listening.